seems that my formula bag decided to burst sometime in the middle of the night and create a beautiful lake of formula on my floor. So doing damage control for that. What a Monday thing to happen. Hoping you guys are having a little bit better of a Monday morning. Did I welcome you to the weekly vlog? I don't think so. Welcome to the week. Hey guys, I have been hearing these weird noises in my room these last few days and I think that there's some kind of animal living in here. I'm going to guess it's a mouse. I'm going to hope it's a mouse because it sounds small and I'm like trying to find it but I don't know what I'm going to do if I do find it but I almost wonder if it was responsible for my feeding bag like if it like nibbled its way through. Of course now it's not making any noise. I got a flashlight. Here, mousey, mousey, mousey. There's like all the millions of beads that I've dropped. But no mouse. Oh my gosh, I totally heard it. It's behind the bed now. I'm going in. This is like really difficult to do with the fuse spine. Anybody? Oh, well, there's my Fitbit. I will find it. Oh, it is time for me to go to sleep, but I can't sleep because I am so freezing. Like shaking, teeth chattering, freezing. It's pretty darn cold outside, but it's not that cold. And it's really doing a number on my joints and my head as well. I don't know if it was just like the drastic temperature change. But like the last few days have been really rough on my body. I think that any kind of change in like the temperature and air pressure really does that. So I think I'm going to actually have to <laughs> go take a bath to try to warm up so I can fall asleep. I keep turning up my heat and I keep getting more blankets, but it's just like this like deep bone chill cold. So hopefully a bath will help. <laughs> this might just be the stupidest looking thing I've ever seen in my entire life but I think it's gonna work. Well, it worked. My port and my port extension are still dry. Okay, so I'm feeling a little bit better after my bath, but I'm really starting to feel that deep chill set back in, and it feels like that familiar feeling that I get before I get one of my fevers. For me, dysautonomia and temperature dysregulation has always just meant that I overheat way too easily. Um, it really didn't occur to me that I could get too cold. But what actually worries me a little bit more is I'm starting to feel that all too familiar feeling I get before my body goes into a dystonia attack. I am hoping that I can just fall asleep and avoid it. Um, I guess we'll have to see. I'm feeling really sick right now. I just, oh, I hope that I feel a little bit better tomorrow. I don't know how I'm going to make it to physical therapy. I mean, I know that it's dysautonomia awareness month, but come on body. I already was pretty darn aware of it. You don't have to make yourself known. Anyway, I hope that this is good night. I hope that I don't check in with you guys anymore tonight. <laughs> okay, well, I did not make it to PT this morning. <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with me. I think it's another one of those dysautonomia crashes or whatever has been going on, but I am in no shape to go anywhere. I can barely move. You guys will have to let me know in the comments if you were going through this. I'm wondering if it's really just like the drastic temperature and air pressure changes. My neighbor is doing construction today. Great timing. So today, I'm going to be watching Netflix in bed with my lazy glasses. And I'm going to enjoy it. Hi guys, it is Tuesday night and I am starting to feel a little bit better. I guess maybe there is something that can be said about getting a little bit of rest. But I am still in a lot of pain. I know that 
my knee isn't really something that I've talked about a whole lot lately, mostly because it's been feeling a whole lot better ever since we started bracing it. But I have been noticing my pain levels slowly increasing still, and when I have the knee brace off, it is just as painful, if not more painful than it was before we started bracing. I'm kind of starting to wonder about long-term options. Not really sure where we go from here. I was hoping that I would be able to do a lot of strengthening with it now, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to be getting a whole lot better. I'm going to try, I think, putting my TENS unit on my knee and seeing if that does anything. If you're not familiar with TENS therapy, it's basically like electric pulses. It kind of just distracts the pain signals that are going through. It doesn't really stop the pain. I don't really notice any difference after once it's shut off. It's pretty much back to normal, but it is nice for a little bit of a break here and there. I think I'm gonna put that on and see what happens. So, great news! The tense seems to really be helping a lot with my pain tonight. I totally forgot how tickly weird it feels to be like electrocuted. It's so strange, you can even see like the muscle spasming because I have it on um, a setting where it's kind of like waves. Let me see if I can catch it on video a little bit. go to bed and disconnect it for the night but I think I'll leave the leads on so that I don't have to keep taking them on and off hopefully my skin will tolerate them probably not but it will tolerate it probably better if I leave them on than if I keep taking them on and off constantly so I just cut the toe off of a fuzzy sock to put over my knee to try to keep the leads down underneath the brace when I sleep. See if I can keep them on as long as possible. Yeah, okay, that works great. That works fine. Hello you guys, it is Wednesday and I'm not gonna lie, I pretty much slept through the entire day. I just really have not been feeling myself these last few days and so I kind of made it my goal to try to sleep off this little flare-up I've been having. And I think it actually worked because I'm feeling a lot better today than I have been the last couple days. Got all my little gadgets going, got the feeding pump going, got the saline pump going, got the TENS machine going. Basically a cyborg at this point. But it's been nice having a chance to rest. I've been going through all you guys' comments and messages, and I've been doing a lot of little paper folding, adding a lot of names to my little prayer box, and just kind of generally getting everything in order for the coming weeks. I just have a lot of different things that we know we need to look into, and a lot of appointments to make. And it's almost hard to try to prioritize what really needs to be done first. And on top of that, a lot of them are recommending various therapies for the different issues and I'm like when am I gonna have time to do any more therapy and have any more appointments we're already going to appointments almost every single day so I don't really know how we're going to balance and manage all of this there is definitely a mouse in this room somewhere I am sharing my room with a critter now I am actually perfectly fine with the idea of sharing my room with a cute little mouse but the problem is that mouses can have diseases, and I already have diseases, <laughs> so we're going to need to eradicate this little friend. But I do not believe in mouse traps or kill traps, and I don't even really like the live traps. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build our own mouse trap. Do you guys remember that game from when you were little? Yeah, it's gonna be kinda like that. I think I'm kind of crazy. First things first, we need to set the trap. I'm gonna use this waste basket. This is kind of small. I don't know if it's gonna be able to jump out of here, but this is all I have. So, waste basket. Now we have to make some kind of little ramp. I'm thinking that this is a good material 
because it's not super slippery. I feel like a mouse would be able to climb this. Piece of tape to hold it down. And now, the most important part. I couldn't decide between peanut butter and cheese, so I decided on both. I'm probably either going to give myself a mast cell reaction or just catch a bunch of ants. But hey, it's worth a try. I don't like killing animals. I'm going to try to do this as humane as possible. And now, we wait. I'm just going to turn all of the lights off. I'm going to leave the room for the rest of the day, load it into a full sense of security, and see what happens. I forgot that I have to hook up to my saline infusion before I go out today. I used to do them overnight when I was doing it with the gravity bag on the IV pole, but now it kind of doesn't make sense to do it over the night because it only takes four hours and then it beeps to let you know that it's done and I just don't really feel like being woken up that extra time. I have been doing it during the day now. I'm just not super used to being hooked up to a whole nother thing. It's just another thing to think about. I saw that one of you in the comments suggested uh, putting my feeding pump in one of the hip bags and putting the IV pump in the other one and have one on each leg. And I mean, that's kind of a genius idea, but I feel like it's not super practical. Um, especially with the knee brace, like do you know how bulky <laughs> it would be to try to walk and all of that? That would be intense. That would be like some serious like video game character stuff. But who knows, I might actually use that tip someday. Even though it makes me have to do it during the day, I'm still so happy with this IV pump. In some ways, it's more limiting because like I said, I'm leashed to more things, but I feel like overall, it's more freeing, especially when I get used to it, I think. And my body seems to be adjusting well to it. I think that the first few days, um, it was kind of like, what's going on? I'm not used to this. But now I'm on my second week and I'm not really noticing any differences when I do it. Any bad differences. I've definitely obviously noticed good differences when I do saline and that's why I'm on it. And look at how lucky I am. It's almost like my supply company like watched my vlog or something because they started sending me the saline with the tubing already attached and primed so i cannot possibly mess this up and kill myself with it did i ever show you guys how this works this is kind of neat so this is the iv saline and the tubing and it's got this little chamber here this is where it attaches to the pump so let me grab the pump pump is right here the interesting thing about this is it has to like, well you take off this blue piece first and just throw it away, you don't need that. And then you take this little doohickey thingy and it's got these little feet that lock into here. It won't lock in until you turn that little mechanism and there's not like a key to turn the mechanism or anything like that. So my home nurse told me that the best way to lock it in is with the quarter. You take the quarter and you stick it in the little slot and turn it and now it's locked in isn't that super weird that it doesn't come with like a key or like a tool for that you have to like have a quarter we've just been taping the quarter to the back of the pump so strange but now this thing is hooked up to the pump and we have to put a battery in it for it to turn on which is also kind of weird i am used to pumps that charge in the wall every night and I feel bad using up all these 9 volt batteries like they only last one or two days at a time and then they told me to just dispose of them I feel like that's such a waste whatever and the machine turns on and it goes through all of its functions and so now we can hook up the pump to the extension I'm gonna actually do this I think under my sweater in case I get hot later. That is the one thing about having a port in the central line. It was way worse with the pick, but um, you're pretty much stuck wearing what you're wearing when you start it. Otherwise, you try to take it off and it's like entangled in the tubing. So you gotta commit to your outfit before you hook up. All right, unclamp all of the many little clamps I've got going. 
And then we are ready to press start. Okay, we're good. It is super nice outside, so we're doing our work outside today. And apparently by working, I meant have part of the editing a video while binge watching Scandal on Netflix. I never thought that I would get into this show just because I'm not really super into like the politics and like relationship drama kind of thing. But guys, did you guys know Norm Lewis is on this show? I know Norm from his work on Broadway. I actually saw him as the Phantom of the Opera and I actually got to meet him. I had entered this art contest and I was actually one of the finalists so they invited me to the launch of the art gallery and there was kind of like this little cocktail party with the cast. And so yeah, I got to talk to Norm and meet him and give him a hug and he was so cool. So when I saw he was on the show, I was like, well, I have to keep watching now. Norm is on it. But it's kind of weird to see him in this role. Anyway, it is gorgeous outside today. This is like my ideal weather. If it could be just like this beautiful, breezy fall weather all year round, I would totally love it. Do you guys know if there's anywhere in the world that has this weather all year round? Because I would move there in a second. I got all ready for bed. I took my night meds and then I was out in the living room um, hanging out with my friend because my friend is crashing on our couch tonight. And so I got really sleepy from my night meds, came in here, laid down, had my eyes closed, was drifting off to sleep, and then I hear it. I can hear it like prowling around the room and like gnawing on stuff and it's totally taunting me at this point. It totally knows that I set a trap for it and it totally is way too smart. He's just taunting me. I'm sure you guys can't hear it but it's like, do you hear that? I swear he's like behind my bed now gonna like eat through something important like a power cord or something I had to put like a pillowcase over my feed bag because he gnawed through it the other morning I, think I inspected it there were teeth marks this little guy is smart <laughs> anyway good night you guys good morning friends it is Friday morning we are about to head out for PT I am just soaking up as much beautiful autumn weather as I possibly can Plus there's like no lights inside. We keep like randomly blowing fuses every single time we like plug something in. I think it's because this stupid mouse is like chewing through electrical cables. But it's kind of funny because we always joke that everything always just goes wrong when my dad's away. Once a year he goes away to Florida for a week with his family and I swear every single time he leaves the entire house falls apart. <laughs> Luckily my dad is great with these things so when he gets home he can fix it all. Ugh, I never want to leave this hammock. It is so beautiful. Why do I have to go and get in the car for two hours? Oh well. Gotta do my job, gotta take care of my body. So, onward. Wanna go inside? Come on. Good girl. So far my mouse trap has yielded no results, but I am remaining optimistic. Hello you guys, it is now Friday night. Both Lauren and I had physical therapy today. And I think we both felt like it was a good appointment. We both felt pretty darn challenged. I mean, I went into my appointment already having a mast cell attack. It was a bit of a rough day, but we both pushed through. But you guys, I think that it might be RIP knee brace, unless I'm able to perform some kind of miracle. I mean, this thing is broken in like seven different ways and it really doesn't want to stay on anymore. But I've been putting up with it until today this little mechanism snapped off again right here. And now there's this lovely little piece of like razor sharp wire that has already given me a couple really good slices to the finger. Just trying to get it off of me. I think this guy is in its last days, which is not good because my knee seems to just be getting worse lately. My physical therapist really had to do some heavy duty rearranging in the knee and in the bones of my leg. So that's a little bit worrying to me. I'm also experiencing 
more issues with feeling and control in the leg, especially in my foot. I'm continuing to wear my jingly little anklet. That is not just a fashion statement. That is because I have foot drop. I am not really able to feel when I pick up my foot. So, in order for me to make sure that I am picking up my foot with each step, I wear a jingly little anklet around my ankle. I know that when I don't hear it jingle, I haven't picked up my foot because honestly, I can't tell. I keep saying to myself before every appointment, okay, I'm going to talk to her about seeing a surgeon. And then I go and she gets everything in place and it feels great. And I'm like, I don't need surgery. I don't need to see a surgeon. All I need is her. But unfortunately, it just doesn't last. It's already acting up. It was already acting up on the drive home. This is not working as a long-term solution. I just really want it to be. I don't know. We'll see if I can fix this brace. And if I cannot, on Tuesday, I will have that conversation. My physical therapist said today that peppermint oil makes a good mouse repellent. So, I will be the judge of that. Hello you guys, it is Saturday evening. I just wanted to sit down and have a little chat with you guys. And I know this is a topic that I've talked about quite a lot recently, but I feel like this is really an important ongoing conversation to be having. And that is how important it is to always have your medical and emergency information and medications with you at all times. I guess that this is something that I'm becoming especially aware of now as I'm trying to become more and more independent. So it was kind of perfect timing in my life to come across this new app called Backpack Health. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you might have already seen that I did make a post about this sometime last week. So I was introduced to this app for the first time by my friend Victoria. Do you guys know Victoria Graham? You've probably seen one of her articles. She is our resident beauty queen in the EDS community. She currently holds the title of Miss Frostberg and I believe that she has competed twice now for the position of Miss Maryland with the platform Making Invisible Illness Visible. But honestly, it feels kind of wrong to just refer to her as a beauty queen because she really is so much more than that. She's a phenomenal public speaker. She is a great advocate. She is a savvy businesswoman and she happens to be a good friend of mine. We were actually surgery buddies for our very first fusions together. Wow, that feels like a lifetime ago. I don't think either of us could have predicted what was to come. But anyway, this woman is a firecracker. She has started her own nonprofit for EDS patients. It's called the Zebra Network. I'm proud to say that I have been and will continue to be helping out on the social media side of things as the organization continues to take off and grow. Recently, the Zebra Network and this new Backpack Health app have formed a partnership and they've really been doing a lot to work together to help to reach out to patients and make it easier for them to manage their medical information. It's definitely a match made in heaven. I am sure that I will talk more about the Zebra Network in the future, but today I just kind of want to focus on the app. Now when Victoria approached me about promoting this app, I was a little bit hesitant. As you guys know, I do not promote anything that I don't use on a daily basis and that I don't like. I had never heard of this app. I had never used it. I had a lot of questions. I was pretty upfront about that. So Victoria set me up with the founder and creator of this app. We did a lot of emailing back and forth to discuss my concerns. Mainly I wanted to know what set this app apart from all of the other apps that are already out there, especially because this one does require a small monthly fee. And I know that a lot of you guys, myself included, do not have a lot of expendable income. So I really wanted to know, you know, what makes this so special? First of all, they were extremely kind. They answered very quickly. They answered all of my questions and they actually were kind enough to give me a free membership to try out the app and to see how I liked it. To be perfectly honest, I didn't think that I would end up using this app very much. I have downloaded many medical apps before with every intention of using them, and I never did. But I decided to give it a try, I downloaded it, I put all my information in, and I swear ever since then I've been using it every single day. I've never found a service like this before. It is making my life so much easier. I 
genuinely really do love this service. I even showed it to my home nurse the other day when she came and accessed me and she said that she's never seen an app or a service like this. She took down all the information because she wanted to recommend it to her patients. Basically, the goal of this app is to replace that big old medical binder that I know that you guys have and I certainly have. The one that you have to lug to all of your appointments with all of your diagnoses and all of your test results and your medication list. And now I genuinely do have all of that information available right at my fingertips, right on my phone, all in the same app, which makes a huge difference. I had like five different apps that managed five different things. When you have a lot of diagnoses and symptoms and allergies and surgeries, medical history, it can be extremely overwhelming to juggle everything and to manage it all on your own. Especially when you're not feeling well and you have brain fog and you just rather be asleep. And because the monthly fee was something that I was so worried about, they actually gave me a promo code to give to you guys that would give you 50% off of your subscription for a life. I was just gonna show you the app on my phone, do a little demo on there, but no. They made me this super cool little demo video with some of my favorite features, and I did a voiceover for it. It looks super professional, so I'm gonna show you that now. Roll clip. Okay, so here's a basic walkthrough of just some of my favorite features available on this app. Let's start with adding information to your profile. This is going to be the main feed that pops up when you open up the app. This main screen basically categorizes and lists all of the information you put in. You can see that in the example, Janice has listed her diagnosis of EDS, the date of her diagnosis, and that she's currently going to PT every three days. But by pressing the plus sign in the corner, she can easily choose to add additional conditions, symptoms, medications, therapies, and treatments, surgeries, procedures, and allergies. So Janice has decided to add her recent echocardiogram to her list of procedures. You can see that she could easily search and find what she was looking for with the search feature, then add the date it was performed, and even attach a photo file from the scan straight from her camera roll. You can just as easily add any other information by following the same steps. Here, you can see she is adding one of her medications. She has no problem finding it in their medical database and then is prompted to enter her frequency and dosage. Okay, now let's talk about sharing information because this is a feature that I am especially excited about. This app allows you to create customizable share cards, emergency cards, medication lists, medical history cards, and more. You can select whatever information you want to include on each card, and then, with the touch of a button, it can be instantly formatted into a PDF file, which you can print or share through an email or text. Now, I know that not all of us are able to manage all of our care on our own. I know I rely on my mom quite a bit. She comes to all my appointments, takes notes, which, by the way, is another feature available on this app, and she lugs around that dreaded binder for me. So I can choose to allow her or another trusted friend or family member access to my personal backpack so that she can help me to monitor my health and input information that I may have missed. And the same applies in the opposite situation. If you are a parent managing both your health and that of a child, you have the option to create multiple backpack profiles within the same account that you can quickly and easily switch back and forth between. To sign up, go to backpackhealth.com and create an account. Once you have confirmed your email address, it will bring you straight to the subscription page. Make sure to enter the promo code above, all capital letters, for 50% off your subscription for life. And then just go to the App Store, download the app, and sign in to get started. Okay, wasn't that super cool? This video is not sponsored by them. I am not getting paid by this company. I am not getting paid to say anything nice. Like I said, I did get a free subscription, so that was very kind of them. This really is my genuine, honest opinion. I really do like it. I think it's really going to continue to come in handy for a long time. I also know that they are working on adding extra features, which I'm very excited about. Like a feature that helps you to keep track of your doctors, because that is what I need in my life. 
and also some different features for the visually impaired and adding more languages. It's not really like one of those apps that you just buy once and then you're on your own. I feel like they are kind of trying to create more of a community and they really are listening to what people want. So it would be really awesome if you guys would join that community and join in on giving some feedback. Let me know if you end up signing up and if you like it too. You can thank Victoria and definitely go check her out and check out the Zebra Network because they're awesome. I'll link everything down below. But now I have quite a bit of editing to do. So I'm going to have to say goodbye for the week. I can't believe it's gone so quickly. But I'm finally feeling a bit better and I'm ready for another week. If you like this video guys, it'd be great if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and join our little family we have going on here. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye!